Welcome to Gotta Run With Will. This is your host, Josh Pesson. In October 2018, 24-year-old Mark Carls was diagnosed with terminal liver cancer and given only three months to live. His brother David put his professional baseball career on hold in order to go surgeon to surgeon to find the one that would save his brother's life. It is now three years later, and I am very grateful to be able to introduce to you today's special guests, Mark and David Carls. Tell me, uh, how was it like uh, growing up? Um, so David's only a year older, and um, my mother always says that I caught up quick to him. So, you know, even though we're uh, separated by a year, we were kind of raised like identical twins. David really excelled in sports like baseball, and I excelled more in sports like soccer, mm -hmm. more running. So when it came time to high school, I didn't make the baseball team. So David went to go on to pursue baseball, and I stuck with cross-country track. Mm. How old were you then? I was around the age of 14 when I started running. Mm, interesting, because th that's around the age I started running too. Interesting. Nice. And um, David, uh, when did you start running? Mark got me into running in 2018 when he was diagnosed. So, you know, growing up, like Mark said, it's always been baseball, 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 baseball. And look at the big leg kick. Puts it down. Perfect balance. And he timed that one. And uh, the big follow through lets it go. And that ball sounded gone. We played, you know, soccer we, and uh, basketball growing up. But Mark really got me motivated with running in 2018 when he was first diagnosed. And now I'm running for him and through him. Mm -hmm. I sort of coach him in a sense, whereas when I was at um, Sloan Kettering under the chemo drip, um, I would send David out for stair runs. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of David's training into running. Wow. Let's go back a, a, a little uh, in more detail about when you guys were growing up. Uh, where did you grow up? Staten Island, New York. Which part? Uh, West Brighton, to be specific. And um, let's see, I guess running might go back to um, um, my father. He was a big runner in the Staten Island Athletic Club, mm. which is the club that three of us yeah. and how we know you yeah. um, are a part of. And so our father was a big part of that. So you, would you say your father was a role model for running? Absolutely. Sports were always pretty big in the household. Our parents actually met at judo class <laughs> at the YMCA. Yeah, interesting. So that's always a fun story that they met fighting and then continue to fight to this day. Hopefully it's not bad fighting. It's uh, good fighting, right? Yeah. yeah. There's good days and bad days. Uh -huh, I hear you. I hear you. When did your fir father first join uh, SIAC? I believe he, he showed us the records. He sat us down about three weeks ago. Do you remember that? And he was showing us his bib numbers and uh, newspaper clippings. And it looked like he was a SIAC member in 1988. Wow. So he ran, uh, you know, the, the local runs uh, on Staten Island, the Turkey Trots and uh, the Lou Marley runs, the Pepper Martin race. Mm -hmm. um, and those are institutions, those, those events, right? Yeah, the absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. The, the Staten Island Half Marathon. And we, yeah, we went through all that paperwork that he had, and it was really cool to see that. And then he did run the marathon, New York City Marathon, in 1991, the year our oldest sister was born. Mm -hmm. And this is the 30-year anniversary of him running the New York City Marathon. And it's also very fitting that it's the 50th anniversary right. of the New York City Marathon. And I heard that you're running the marathon, right? And I also heard you're also running yep. the marathon. I'm running it, too, for like my seventh time. Yeah, So cool. Uh, my goal is to break my PR, so we'll see. You know, last time I did that was 10 years ago when I was 44. I'm 54 now, so we'll have to see. You mm -hmm. know? Good luck. And uh, you have a, thank you. You have a goal with uh, running it? Did you ever run it before? It's, it's my first official mm -hmm. marathon, and it's, you know, again, it's fitting that it's the 50th anniversary. So I, I don't really know what to expect. I just hope that I can cruise by and, you know, hopefully run you know, sub seven minute miles, but we'll see. Wow. We'll see. Yeah, I heard from before you said your father saved all the bib numbers throughout his uh, running career. And that shirt, was that your dad's? 
Yeah, it was. So he did save a lot of his T-shirts that we have a collection of at the house. Unfortunately, some of them, you know, just due to age and wear and tear of washing and moths, they have disintegrated. So we've we've tried to keep a lot of them, and, and he's tried to curate them and keep them nice throughout the years. Yeah, this is the Staten Island Half Marathon. Wow. That was September 23rd of 1990. That's vintage. Yeah. And he ran it well. I, we, him, we were looking at it. I think he ran it. It was respectable, his time. Yeah, that shirt's sure older than us. Yeah, this shirt is, yeah. It's a good shape. New York Row Runners Club. Yeah, that was back when uh, all the running shirts were made out of cotton, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't have any wicking ability back then, right? Uh, mm -mm. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's all about chafing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Wow, that's great. How was it growing up, you two, as brothers... How did you get along with each other or did you not get along or was, what's the situation there? I said earlier we were raised kind of like identical twins. Right. Uh, there was always competitiveness. I, I was always doing better in the classroom and um, I, I, I could help David with his homework even though he was a year older than me. Um, and, but, but, you know, it, it wouldn't really translate helping me with sports. Like, you know, David would pitch to me, he'd throw batting practice to me and he, you know, but it really wasn't translating. Mm -hmm. But I guess I got the most when David would hit the ball, I would chase the ball in the outfield. That's probably the, what I got out of it. Mm -hmm. That's where my running ability came from. You said you helped him with his schoolwork. Was it, were you, are you a math whiz? Algebra, I'm pretty good. My brain just makes sense of, of, of math. Mm. I also uh, noticed that uh, you two, you know, when you were younger, you, uh, were, you did a lot of creative things together, like uh, you made skits. Tell me more about the skits. I went to school at Hunter College. Um, you're also an alum. Yes, uh, my alma mater. It was a and, great experience. Yeah. yeah, and I majored in media journalism. And a lot of the media journalism classes was um, broadcast journalism, where you would you know, do live interviews with a subject. So that's where, really where it started, you know, my love for the camera. Mm -hmm. So you know, I bought a nice DSLR, mm -hmm. and I brought it to Dave and said, I would, we, we, let's interview each other doing funny things. And then that translated into, you know, making funny skits. You guys got to help me. I'm losing all my hair. I know just the thing. Well, what do you guys think? We did make some funny skits up till it was time for David to get a real job. Ah, I see. So that, that put a kibosh on our funny skits. Life got in the way then, right? Life got in the exactly. way. But, you know, we're always threatening to do a, a Halloween video. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that, if you could do that. Yeah. Maybe you can star in it. I know you did some acting of your I'll own. I'll help you guys out. I don't mind. Yeah. But three years ago, four years ago, you were diagnosed with... Uh, the cancer. Could you tell us more about uh, like what led up to that or what, what happened when, when you found out about the diagnosis? We'll start um, in, during my college uh, cross-country years, mm -hmm. whereas my best year was my sophomore year, even though I was training harder every summer and season, my times were just getting slower and slower. I was going to doctors, taking allergy tests, you know, getting different endoscopies, stuff like that. This was 2018, mm -hmm. the fall, okay. when I had it. I woke up with a terrible pain, terrible pain, the worst pain in my life, and I couldn't take a deep breath. What it turned out to be was a, a um, seven and a half pound tumor on my lung. Um, so, which, um, you know, they, the cancer originated in the liver. But, um, you know, it manifested itself on my lung. Mm, and um, wow. so, you know, I just, I would just, I would get sick every time I would run. Wow. And then so, uh, you know, my, David took me to the ER. I spent the next week in, on, in oncology. I got out of the hospital. It was actually, uh, it was like Halloween weekend. Right. And um, I was like, oh, you know, I, I go into the hospital and when I got out, everybody was dressed like a zombie. <laughs> you know, wow, that's, it, was, that's, it was a nightmare. Uh, yeah, ironic. Yeah, because yeah. I was on all these pain pills. We kept light of the situation as much as we could. 
you know, not knowing that I had such a rare cancer. It was one in five million. Diagnosed with uh, fibrolamellar hepatocellular carcinoma, and they're still looking for a cure. Very rare liver cancer that happens in young um, adults and teens. Nothing to do with, you know, abusing the liver. Nothing to do with drinking alcohol, eating fried foods. It's just, it's a mutation uh, due to a lack of a chromosome. Wow. So the, these two proteins meet there and form a chimera, and it, it makes a fibrous pattern. Um, so that's, and so then I, I just, you know, really couldn't run. So I would do some walks. Is there a cure for that or? I, right now, the, um, the only way to treat it uh, is surgery. Mm -hmm. And once you cut it out, which is a nice thing that it's in the liver, because when you cut it out, um, you know, the liver will grow back. Mm -hmm. The sad part is it grows back with the cancer. Really? Yeah. So, so it's, it's like it's because it's like part of the DNA. Wow. So it's, it's a tough life. Waking up some days, rushing to the bathroom, getting sick. It's, it's, it's Is not, it a daily uh, occurrence? It, yeah, yeah. You know, maybe there's one good day a week. And what's your day like now, um, you know, from waking up? Uh, you said you have to go to the bathroom a lot. And, uh, like, do you have to take medications or anything? Yeah, I'm on so many medications. Whereas before, when I was, a, you know, in the best shape of my life, where I thought I was, you know, I wasn't even, I was skipping aspirins, skipping Tylenol, you know, if I needed anything. It was off the organic food diet, mm -hmm. but um, now I'm, you know, I'm pretty dependent on a lot of the medications. I'm lucky that they're there, and these medications are here for patients like myself. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really tough. Is there any side effects of uh, what you're taking? Yeah, drowsiness, uh, bloating. Mm -hmm. But you know, a big thing is I got to keep on eating, too. Because mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm at 100 pounds right now. Wow. What's a healthy weight for your age? Well, when I was running with the seven and a half pound tumor, I was at 150 pounds mm -hmm. as a distance runner. And that's like a pretty heavy distance runner yeah. for someone who's 5'8". Yeah. I was a muscular guy. Yeah. My brother's still a muscular guy. Yeah. He was much stronger than I was. Wow. Though. Yeah, he was very strong. We were like he still are very Lane. strong. Thank you. For my weight class, I, I, can, I think I can, I can take on anybody else at 100 pounds. Mm. I'd like to switch to your brother, Dave, and ask you about... I know you were looking for, after you were, he was diagnosed, um, like surgeons told you like they, it was, it was, an impo it was it not possible or something, or tell me more about that. Your yeah, so it was, you know, it was just um, consultation after consultation after consultation. This is an, in, an inoperable cancer. Mark has, if he's lucky, three months to live. And, you know, there was, there was two ways that we could have done this. You know, we could have just, you know, put our head in between our legs and say, let's live out these three months the best we can, or look for a second, a fourth, fifth, and, and sixth opinion. And, um, you know, the way we were raised, you know, we don't take no for an answer. Mm -hmm. So it was, do as much scholarly research as you possibly can, get in touch with oncologists, get in, get in touch with scientists, get in touch with the fibrolamellar community, and look for the answers that, we specifically needed. And, you know, after doing research and, and speaking with different oncology teams from the top hospitals in, in the, the New York City and, and uh, tri-state area, we found the right oncology team at mm -hmm. Columbia Presbyterian, New York Presbyterian. And within months, Mark got, got the surgery. And, you know, a few years later, three years Three and a half years later, whatever it is, he's still here. Wow, it sounds like your brother did a lot of legwork uh, to, to do all the research. How do you feel about that? It, sounds, it seems like he basically saved your life or yeah, prolonged well, it. It just kind of shows I mean, how what a close thought. we are. Yeah. It shows how close we are. And, you know, not only that, but he found a surgeon who's also a runner, a mm. marathon runner. That helps. That mm -hmm. helps. Tomoaki Kato mm -hmm. of the Columbia Presbyterian. Mm -hmm. So... He knew how bad I wanted to get back on the horse. Yeah. After the surgery, I was very sick. I was in the hospital for a month. But a few months later, I was, I got my 5K down to sub 25. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then I had a second surgery a year ago, August of 2020. Um, 20. 
And that was real tough because I couldn't have any, um, any guests in the hospital because of the coronavirus. Right. It was really tough. That was a battle in itself, being at the hospital and you know, your only friends are the nurses, the doctors that would come and visit you every day and yeah. FaceTiming my mother. Right. How did that feel? Gary, sad? Loneliness. Yeah, complete loneliness. I spent the majority of my time during the quarantine in bed, probably around 20 hours a day. Other than that, I'd be recording fireside chats. I never want calls. anything to do with these drag hunts again. Back to sleep for a few hours. I'd spend a lot of my time sleeping. Got a lot of sleep. Eventually, I'd want to do some yoga and meditation. I would try my hardest to seek enlightenment. Then I'd read. I've gone through about seven books so far, and it's not over. Eventually, my brother would take me out to the park to get some sunshine. I'd try to learn some French. Bonjour. Jim Applemore. And then I'd remember I was dying from liver cancer. So I spent a, a much of my time in there. <laughs> And then back to bed for contemplation. But I got that surgery and it's been really tough to get back into running now. The longest I've gone is a mile and a half. Wow. Now, your brother ha had or still has a professional baseball career that you kind of had to put on hold in order to help uh, yeah. your brother basically help save him. So could you tell us more about, about that, please? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, it was... I always had the passion for baseball, Mark, of course, but being my biggest fan. And the goal was to play here professionally in the States. And I had a few tryouts with a few professional teams, including the Mets, which was cool. Wow. Nice experience. And Mark was there to, to witness that, that tryout. And, you know, we're, I was in touch with a few area scouts. And, you know, it didn't work out. But, again, it's just like the way how we've always been with our life, you know. You, you get a no here, you get a no there, but you look for an opportunity. You look for a, another chance. And right. that chance was to play internationally overseas. So I did that for a few years, semi-professional overseas. Mm -hmm. And Mark came out to visit me in, in Europe and um, played a little bit in Australia, a little bit in wow. Asia, which was really cool. And I'm extremely grateful for, for that experience. And, you know, for that short amount of time, I was able to do it and and being an ambassador for baseball, so not only playing, but coaching and uh, helping spread the game in other parts of the world, which was really, really cool. It wasn't as big as, you know, let's say soccer or basketball, but spreading baseball and teaching young kids so they can, you know, move up the steps and enjoy the game right? and teach them, which was really cool. But, uh, you know, and I was planning to go to Panama in for winter baseball mm -hmm. in 2018, when Mark was diagnosed, but you know, things get in the way and you know, right. it's not the end of the world. That famous line from one of the John Lennon songs, uh, life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's very appropriate for, uh, for this situation. Part of growing up as a teenager and a young person, uh, which is, you know, especially before you get married, you know, dating, okay? You, you tried to carry on a normal dating life, even with your condition. Could you tell us more about uh, any kind of uh, changes you had to make with uh, the dating situation in your life? It's, it's become so much tougher. And, you know, uh, I'm on all the, all the dating apps and I'm always looking for, you know, the next, the next big thing, the next big relationship. And went on a few dates and um, it's a lot easier for me to go on a double date. Because, like, you know, if I'm not strong enough to do something, David can hold the conversation for mm -hmm. the both of us. Very nice. That's uh, very uh -huh. interesting. I would love to be a fly on the wall watching that go happen. And um, <laughs> it was really tough. But we tried going on um, double dates, like, from the start. Mm -hmm. And David found a nice lady from uh, Bayo, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. I went on, a, like, their first few dates with them. She was cool with it. She was cool with the, being part of the, the deal, me being part of the deal. And she's still around. And we'll see her after this. So mm -hmm. it's for any potential female dates, it was like a two-for-one special. Two, it's a yeah, two-for-one exactly. special. Two yeah. for the price of one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me and Gabby, we get along uh, music-wise, yeah. film-wise, 
David and her, they, sometimes they go on runs together. Nice. You know, they enjoy the, uh, this nice uh, French restaurant. Mm -hmm. they, love, they love the mussels. Mm -hmm. They love ordering mussels. Mm -hmm. It almost seems like a setup for a sitcom or something, you know? Uh, yeah, my two husbands or something like that. That's, I don't know. Not, that's not a bad idea. Hey, we got to write that, that yeah. idea down and write, start writing scripts for it. <laughs> we do. <laughs> Yeah, that'll be the next video. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and didn't you have to write something because it's your situation is unique where you wanted your brother to go on the dates with the potential uh, woman. Uh, didn't you kind of write up some kind of special profile and word it? Could you tell us about how you worded that? We have the most success with Tinder. And on my profile, it says... All I ask is that my brother accompany me on the dates. Most dates go extremely well. The key is keeping a sense of humor about the whole thing. My bio, it says, um, you know, stage four cancer, matching tattoo with my mom, brings brother on dates, but the man of your dreams. We went on a few dates and some so, yeah. of them were cool. And some of some ladies didn't like it. They, they couldn't, they couldn't groove with it. Yeah, it wasn't yeah it's them. definitely not a traditional date. No. Yeah. No, open-minded person, I guess. That's the... Exactly. And I, and I found that open-minded person. And things have been pretty good the last two-plus years. So yeah, I two years. can't complain. The past few months, how, how, is, how has things been lately? With, uh, like, how are you, let's say, how, how are you living your life re recent, lately? My health is really declining now. I, um, I've been taking the past few months off of treatment uh, just because the, the past two, uh, past, past four chemotherapies I've been on um, didn't work and the mm -hmm. cancer just it's growing very violently and um, so it's just, it's been really tough just you know this the weight loss um, not, me not being able to enjoy food I had in the past I'm not able to run anymore and you know there's that feeling mm -hmm. there's that emotion there's that that verb Mm -hmm. that runners can describe to each other like, oh, I was on this run. Right. Where, where, they, where that run, it's like a third person run mm -hmm. where you feel yeah. like you're in the moment. Yeah. Now, I haven't had that feeling in um, almost three years. Wow. You know, after my first surgery, I got it a few times. But the past year, uh, past few months, now every run has been torture and... Um, mm -hmm. It's, it's been getting harder every single day. What's your most recent run? Didn't you uh, run today? Today, I tried running. Uh, I went to the fun run. Oh, that, the the SIAC fun run. The local they, Staten Island Athletic Club. They had a traditional club. every Saturday morning mm -hmm. free fun run, yeah. Cold Lakes Park. Right. And, um, you know, I was able to run 30 seconds. And then my liver just shut down and just told me, nope, not today. Mm. So I, I walked. Um, the first half, and then I decided just to throw in the towel, and because um, you you know you can't you can't show up 100 percent every day right. for running if you have to show up with cancer 100 percent every day. Right, right. How has your diet changed? Like, could you eat anything, or you have to eat specific, stay away from specific things? Uh, well, right now I'm trying to gain weight, so I'm just I'm trying to eat anything. Mm -hmm. Now I'm talking anything. I'm talking. Like, I'll, I'll eat a frozen pizza. <laughs> Whereas the past, I was eating, uh, you know, whatever Whole Foods let me pay for with my wallet. Right, right, right. Yeah, so right now I'm just, a lot of, um, it's like supplements, mm -hmm. like protein powders, yeah. Endorox, uh, pea protein. Peas are high in protein, right? Yeah, yeah and because of the, the surgery, I'm missing a lot of vital organs. So I, my digestion's a little different. Oh, uh, what, was, what was removed? Uh, so the, the head of the pancreas, the gallbladder, a bit of the stomach and the duodenum. Mm. And then uh, the, the, the part they cut out in the liver, um, that part is still absent. And it just started growing the opposite way. Wow. So I, you know, it's, it's a, my, my, um, my naked body, it's a weird shape. Uh-huh. And when I, when I get an x-ray, they always ask me, where's your stomach? Wow. Because the stomach is a good way to orient yourself when looking at an x-ray. Right, right. But they, my stomach is on the opposite side. Wow. Um, 
So and it just it's digesting digesting food now is, is is so different. Life is so different. Things you took for granted now it's it's an ordeal. Yeah. How has uh, the local running community? Uh, how have they responded to your condition? Yeah, well, SIAX and I'm an athletic club. They, um, you know, they 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 wel- welcomed up with open o- with open arms. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, coming up this October 30th, yeah, there's going to be a fun run in my honor, mm. uh, celebrating my life. You know, we're starting the memorial now. Yeah, you wow. know, God forbid. Um, but, you know, that's going to be really great. You know, there's going to be Halloween candy. There's going to be costumes. Yeah, day before Halloween. Yeah. yeah. And um, that's going to be, it's going to be, you know, I'm really happy that the, uh, the club um, is giving me this much support. Yeah. I had a fundraiser raising money for one of my surgeries for the bills. You know, SIAC filled two tables. Wow. So it's just, it's, it's great being part of a team. And that's like something coming out of college. Um, you, you know, you lose that, that team, you leave that, you lose that camaraderie. Right. And, you know, I, I like to think that we got it back because, you know, me and my brother are a team, me and my brother and my dad are a team. And then now we have me and my brother, and my dad, yourself, right. The rest of SIAC as yeah. a team running connects so many people. Yeah, it definitely does. How are your parents taking this? I say pretty hard. they they both retired in 2018. Okay, wow. And I decided to get sick in 2018. Wow, what timing. So when people say, oh, that's the worst, I always say, no, it's the worst having a sick child. Right. You know, I was just at the point in my life where I wasn't a child anymore. Mm-hmm. And I kind of got thrown back into that, that childhood. Whereas, I, you know, I need my parents to take care of me and mm-hmm. stuff. Well, no matter how old we, we get, we'll always be our parents' babies that will love us unconditionally, you know? Yeah, that's true. And it's great that I have such, um, you know, like such great team player parents that they take me to all my appointments. Yeah, so much so that my father, like, put off his, his own doctor's appointments mm. for me. So that's tough. We mentioned your race in your honor is going to be the day before Halloween. And I know you guys value, high, value Halloween greatly where you're going to have costumes for that day. Could you tell me more about that? Yeah, well, I'm going to be Spider-Man. Okay. I ordered the costume. It's going to come in. Ah, all right. And um, last year, David, you were Harry Potter. Are you going to repeat the performance? Mm-hmm. I'm thinking about it. I, mean, I did love that costume. And it was easy. You know, it was more of just like a cape, a nice shirt, tie, sweater. So it wasn't, I was able, it was very like, um, it was very flexible for me to be able to run in it. So, yeah, maybe I'd probably repeat that again. Oh, so you're going to dress as the characters in the race. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's always a good time. It's always a good laugh. Yeah. It makes, yeah. It makes light of everything. Yeah, Harry Potter and short shorts. Yeah, it, it works. <laughs> it works. Yeah, you, you want a flexible costume while you're running. Right, right. You know, we, someone shows up as a, a Ghostbuster. Right. So he has to carry around this big backpack and gun the whole time. That was awesome, though. Uh, yeah, he. I think he won top prize. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, the um, so the New York City Marathon, you have you know thousands of runners, and there's a lot of runners who are just normal who are serious about their race. Then you got runners who dress in costumes. Uh, you ever see that uh, do, during the marathon? Yeah, the banana is a big you know yes. it's a fan favorite. Running banana. Last time I ran the marathon, um, I was being beaten by a running banana, and I felt humiliated. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to, that banana's not going to beat me. No, don't <laughs> let it happen this year. No, put in those extra miles. <laughs> yeah. So, David, you're, you're doing the marathon, you said, for your uh, f- first official marathon, right? Do um, you have a game plan? I don't exactly know. I mean, it's kind of, it would be based on whatever Mark says. If, you know, if Mark says, you know, go out and enjoy yourself, you know, do a comfortable pace and, and, and just finish. Or if Mark, you know, says, hey, you need to get sub three, you know. Right then make it happen. I don't care, you know, and, and I see it, you know, it's, I know it's going to be tough. The marathon's going to be after mile 18, 19, 20, your body it tenses up, it, it shuts down. But in the back of my head, you know, I, I'll know this pain is not even comparable to what Mark went through. Multiple surgeries and recovery. It's, 
you can't even compare it. So, you know, when people are complaining, like Mark said, oh, this is the worst. Is it really the worst? You know, it's not. But so I'll have that in the back of my mind. And, and I, um, I've run the marathon myself a few times, several times. And when you cross the finish line, it feels great. You go through a, a, a whole bunch of emotions. And there's a lot of pain after you finish the race. And I always say to myself, I'm not, never doing this again because I was in so much pain. But then the next day, you're okay. So that pain is temporary. True. What he's gone through is it's with him every day. So it's a whole different ball game. Yeah. And I understand that, you know. So. Um, yeah, and with David's training runs, he hit a half at 129. Wow. So I'm really confident in David, um, maybe even qualifying for Boston. Yes. You know, as a possibility if, if the training continues. I hope so. Yeah, you, you, you're at on pace bar. for that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Only time will tell. We'll see come November 7th. I wish you luck in that. Now, after your first diagnosis uh, over three years ago, uh, the doctors gave you three months to live, and here you are now, three years later, able to sit down, come from Staten Island to Harlem, Manhattan to do this interview. What would you say your short-term goals are uh, from this point forward? So I'm going to get back to finishing a 5K, uh, okay. preferably in under an hour. Mm -hmm. okay. I kind of, kind of have like a little bit of a limp now. We'll do some complications due to the surgery. I'd like to get up to 130 pounds. And um, let's see. You guys want to help me out with the third goal? Yeah, I mean, we'd well, love to travel. I remember you texted oh, yeah. me a few nights ago about... Let's get to Paris. Yeah, that would be awesome. Let's mm. get back to Paris. Now, something you did that was on your bucket list just a few months ago, uh, I'd like you to talk more about the uh, stand-up comedy situation. Could you tell us more about that? Yeah, so um, <laughs> recently I, I was given a year diagnosis. Mm -hmm. On my bucket list was always, you know, get up at an open mic and, you know, tell some jokes. Because, you know, it's, it's easy when you're in the audience. Right. right. I can do that. Right, hey, yeah. You know, and I did that. Yeah. And, you know, so my brother came. I had one of my friends. He played the uh, drums behind me after every joke. <laughs> he would give me a but um bump pa. Right, right, right. And it was a good showing, good crowd, and told some jokes. Where was it at? Uh, it was at a local pub in Staten Island called The Hop Shop. Okay. Oh, yeah. so people were probably under the influence of alcohol already. So pretty much anything you said was funny, right? Yeah. I'm a funny guy. I'm a funny guy. And, you know, I had my index cards out because I'm a nerd. <laughs> and um, let's see. I think my opening joke was... How do you know when, you're, uh, when your girlfriend's getting fat? How? She starts wearing your wife's clothes. <laughs> <laughs> but it was nice it was a good turnout too and you had a a date came that was fun that's one thing that i know women love a guy who's funny women love guys who make them laugh so yeah yeah <laughs> that's why pete davidson does so well ah yes from uh, saturday night live yeah, yeah. staten island guy right 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 so your your stand-up routine was uh success would you say yeah oh that was total success Maybe there'll be a continuation. I just got to write more material. Yes. I, that's what I've been doing because I did. I, I had that on my bucket list, too. And I did stand up uh, open mic twice in my life. Second time I brought my daughter, my teenage daughter, so I could, you know, embarrass her. That's what dads do, right? Throughout the pandemic, I've been writing down jokes in my little uh, note, note app in my phone and sometimes stealing some friends' jokes, uh, and uh, give, I'll give them credit. Maybe I'll even pay them a buck or so if I use the joke. David, how, how have you been doing throughout the pandemic? It's definitely tough. Life has changed, yeah. and um, just with all these different restrictions and you're trying to keep Mark safe, you know, we have been taking extreme precaution. You know, mm -hmm. just, you know, God forbid, um, you know, anything is to happen. And we also, Mark is staying with our grandparents as well on mm -hmm. Staten Island, so in there. They're both in their late 90s. So wow. we're trying to, they both did get the, their second dose of the, the vaccine. So, you know, they're, they're still, you know, they're doing well and no reactions or anything like that. But of course, you know, it, it has not been the same. So it's like Mark's, you know, predisposed condition and then the 
the world, basically the world shutting down because of COVID has not been the, the easiest last few years and, and some few months. It's been tough, but you know, we're, again, we're trying to make the most out of every situation. Has there been a scare in your family because of COVID or? Yeah, I actually caught it. Oh, wow. After receiving both vaccine vaccinations. After the vaccinations? Yeah. How did I, that happen? Um, must have been the variant. Must have been either one of the variants or the mu. Um, so, and, and uh, but, you know, I, I, um, I took the, the, the most out of the situation and I caught up on all the Marvel movies. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of them, too. Yeah. It was it was a trick. What was your favorite movie so far out of all the ones? Oh, the, so? the, the third uh, Thor movie, Ragnarok. Ah, okay. Yeah, that one's great. That one's funny. Those uh, superhero movies are great. Uh, you know, they they uplift you. You know, uh, I know they're not uh, re they're fictitious, but still they're uplifting. And uh, you know, we could we we everyone has a superhero superhero uh, potential in them in some way. You know. Yeah. And another, I guess, um, honorable mention will go to the um, Andrew Garfield uh, Spider-Man series. Yes. Does that mean anything to you? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, since you're bringing it up, I was uh, a background performer in uh, uh, one of those films. Yeah. And I had to basically run for my dear life in, uh, in a Park Avenue scene where Spider-Man was battling um, the rhino and uh, all the... Uh, Concrete and rock debris on the street was made out of styrofoam. And so it, it looked like real rocks, but I could pick it up and bop myself on the head with it. So uh, it's, all, it's all fakery, you know, but it's, I, I love the behind the scenes of that. I'm sure you do too, learning about uh, how they fake things in, in movie making, you know? So uh, yeah, that's my little uh, diversion. We actually had an episode of Gotta Run with Will uh, s several months ago where we interviewed uh, Mark Vogt and Bob Denker, who are fellow background actors and runners, and we talked about our experiences uh, in film and TV. So it's definitely a nice escape. Yeah, definitely. You know, how was it waking up this morning? Uh, it was tough. You know, I had a, a nightmare that I was throwing up, mm -hmm. and uh, I wake up, and um, it's happening. Mm. So I rush to the bathroom, and I, um, I get sick. And then I, I try to get myself together for the fun run. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I tried my hardest and I can only get 30 seconds in. And, um, you know, but I, I can only do my best. Mm -hmm. And you, you are doing your best. best. And you are. So it's, it's, it's every, every day is tough. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'd like to uh, thank you both for being on today's show. Okay. And I'd like to uh, thank... Will Sanchez for uh, being uh, the wonderful host and creator of Gotta Run With Will and the people who do the behind the scenes work, Freddie, Carla, Tiffany, and Rich. Okay, I wanna thank those people and I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Gotta Run With Will. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you very much for having us. You're welcome.